Some of the biggest military operations in history have been carried out in complete secrecy only to be declassified years down the road. And those are the exact missions we'll be discussing today. And I say we because today I'm joined by Lucy. Hey guys, I was a former host on Top 5 Scary Videos. You've probably seen me around before, especially on social media. I'm also here to announce that I have my own personal YouTube channel coming. I'm hoping to launch maybe next week, we'll see, but it'll be linked down below. All right, well, let's just jump right into this then. All right, I'm gonna kick things off with a little mission from World War II called Operation Mincemeat. So this whole operation does not sound like something that would happen in real life. If someone were to sit down and outline this plan to your face, you'd probably laugh and then be like, uh, we are in the middle of World War II though, so like, why are you joking around? We have kind of an important job to do here. But all of this really did happen. So this mission was carried out by the British, and the goal here was to throw off Germany about the Allies' plans for an upcoming military operation. So in 1943, the British got hold of the body of a guy who died after eating rat poison. Then they dressed him up as an officer and created a complete fictional identity for him. They attached a briefcase containing fake documents to his wrist, and then released the body off the coast of Spain. The documents contained all these clues that kind of pointed to the Allies planning to launch an invasion in southern Europe. The idea was to make the Axis powers think the Allies were planning to attack where they least expected, causing them to divert their military away from the actual target. Everything just hinged on this body being found and the Germans figuring out the clues in these fake documents. And by some miracle, it all works. The body washed up on shore, it was discovered, the Germans were contacted, and they fell for the ruse. And this ended up being a big part of the success of the Allied invasion of Sicily in 1943, known as Operation Husky. By tricking the enemy into expecting an attack in a different location, Operation Mincemeat helped create the advantage the Allies needed. Next up we have the Ghost Army, another secretive World War II operation. This was top secret Allied unit, a real crater bunch called the Ghost Army. Their mission was to fool the enemy. This special unit was made up of artists, designers, and actors with a mission to create big illusions to trick the Axis forces. Again, this is gonna sound like a Monty Python sketch, but the Ghost Army actually used things like inflatable tanks, trucks, and artillery, basically giant balloons that looked like real military equipment. From a distance, these inflatable props, also known as rubber dummies, were so convincing that even enemy planes were fooled. The idea was to make the enemy think there was a huge army when, in reality, there were just a handful of soldiers. The Ghost Army also played with sound and radio to play tricks. They broadcasted fake radio signals that mimicked the sounds of a large army complete with fake talk and secret code words. This made the enemy believe that the Allied forces were moving in different directions than they actually were. The Ghost Army's existence was was top secret for a long time. It was only in the 90s that their existence became declassified. Next up, we have more inflatable fun with the blow-up dolls the CIA would use to dupe the KGB during the Cold War. And yes, they used that type of blow-up doll, the ones that lonely people use. Not me. A man named Walter McIntosh was behind this creative little trick. He's been behind some of the most successful CIA missions in history, but this one was probably his strangest. So there was a big problem for the CIA. All their spies in Moscow were always being followed around by pesky Russian counter spies. The US was watching Russia. Russia was watching the US. It's just, it's just how it was at the time. It was a spy festival every, everywhere you went. And being that this was the 70s, adult shops are kind of like McDonald's. They were just all over the place. At least that, that's how I kind of always picture the 70s. So they got the bright idea to use some of these nighttime dolls as decoys to allow CIA operatives to quickly slip out of the passenger side of their vehicles while the driver quickly inflated the doll, making it appear as though there was still two people in the car. As long, you know, as they weren't being pursued too closely, this did prove to be pretty effective. Next up we have Operation Jedburgh. In the thick of World War II, there was a covert plan called Operation Jedburgh that brought together teams of unique trios of soldiers. Each team had three soldiers, each 
from a different allied nation who would be dropped behind enemy lines to cause some trouble for the Axis powers. These teams were secret squads, often included one soldier from the US, another from the UK, and the third from somewhere else in the Allied crew. They parachuted into occupied territory in Europe to team up with the local resistance groups. They were trained to be sneaky, pulling off guerrilla warfare tactics. Their job was to stir things up, sabotage enemy operations, gather intel, and generally make life difficult for the Third Reich. They'd blow up bridges, disrupt supply lines, and gather info about enemy movements. Next on the list, we have Operation Chaos. Now, this one is one of the most controversial top secret operations in US history. Definitely not as positive as many of the stuff on this list, but uh, you can bet it had a pretty big impact on the people's trust in the government going forward. Operation Chaos was an operation from 1967 to 1974. It was a top secret CIA project targeting US citizens. The goal was to keep tabs on and in some cases just infiltrate groups that were critical of the government, especially those involved or suspected of being involved in anti-Vietnam War and civil rights activity. It'd secretly gather all this info on these groups and figure out what they were planning. At every protest, meeting, rally, at the time, whatever, you could bet there were agents keeping an eye on things and gathering information. They didn't use fancy gadgets to electronically eavesdrop on people. It was government overreach at its finest, a total violation of people's privacy. Next up, we have Operation Fortitude South. This was a very slick move during World War II that involved some serious bluffing. So during the lead up to D-Day, the big allied invasion in Normandy, everybody knows something massive is brewing, but where and when? The Allies wanted to keep the Germans guessing about where the main attack was coming from. So kind of like with Operation Mincemeat, they came up with this plan to make it look like the invasion was going down in a different spot. They set up a fake army they referred to as the first US Army Group, complete with inflatable tanks and trucks. They were designed to trick German reconnaissance planes into thinking a big invasion force was gearing up in the Pas de Calais, when the actual invasion was going down in Normandy. They wanted the Germans to concentrate their defenses there, leaving Normandy a bit more vulnerable. Well, in the end, the bluff worked and the Allies pulled off one of the most significant military maneuvers of the war. Next on the list, we have Project Blue Book. Now, it's it's hard to say how much of an impact this, this really had on history. That really depends where you stand on the existence of aliens. And if you know anything about me, you know I'm, I'm big into them. So Project Blue Book is uh, good in my book. Most of this stuff is also kept very top secret, so we don't really know 100% what they found, but it's pretty cool that this group even existed in the first place. Project Blue Book was a branch of the United States Air Force that ran from 1952 to 1969, and their sole focus was investigating reports of unidentified flying objects, pretty much the real-life X-Files. There was a big surge in UFO sightings in the early 50s, to the point where it kind of became a public concern. Uh, I'm sure that didn't have anything to do with all the sci-fi movies coming out at the time. But the Air Force established Project Blue Book to go out and collect, analyze, and then document all these UFO reports. Thousands of sightings were reported and investigated during its existence. So when someone reported a UFO sighting, it would be examined by experts from Project Blue Book to try and see if there were any natural, everyday explanations for what people were seeing. And if an incident couldn't be easily explained, it was officially labeled as unidentified. One of the most famous cases investigated by Project Blue Book was the 1965 UFO sighting in Exeter, New Hampshire. Witnesses reported seeing strange lights in the sky, and two police officers even saw a large unidentified craft hovering above some trees, with one of the officers being quoted saying it was as big as a barn. The Air Force couldn't come up with any logical explanation. Next up is Operation Gunnicide. So this was a crucial mission during World War II where a group of Norwegian exiles and British sabotaged a heavy water production facility in German-occupied Norway. Heavy water was crucial in Germany's atomic bomb project, so if successful, this would throw a wrench into the Third Reich's development of nuclear weapons. In 1943, a team of Norwegians were parachuted into the rugged terrain near the facility. The team 
successfully infiltrated the facility after dodging guards and mines. They snuck into the plant through a cable duct, planted explosives, and then got out of there before setting them off, causing significant damage to the facility. This set the Germans back six months. Then a year later, Norwegian sabotaged the Third Reich again when they sunk a ship hauling a big supply of heavy water to Germany. All right, next up we have Operation Gold, also known as Operation Stopwatch. This was another Cold War era intelligence mission carried out by the United States, the United Kingdom, and France. The mission had a very specific target, the Soviet Union's communication lines. There was a lot of tension between the Western powers and the Soviet Union, especially in the early years of the Cold War. Everyone was trying to figure out what the other side was up to. Now, communication is key. And the Soviets were sending messages via telegraph cables that ran through the city of Berlin. Operation Gold was hatched to secretly tap into these cables to eavesdrop and gather intel. So they went about this in probably the bluntest way possible. They tunneled under the city so they could have direct access to the communication lines and tap into them. A tunnel was dug from West Berlin to East Berlin, and it was fully equipped with listening devices. But things didn't quite go according to plan, to put it lightly. The Soviets found out about the tunnel. Actually, they'd really known about it pretty much all along. There was a mole in the operation. Literally, see what I did? It's a mole. It's underground. There's a man named George Blake. Uh, he'd informed the KGB of the CIA and M16's plan. The KGB didn't immediately expose it either. Instead, they let the operation continue while having some fun and like feeding them false info through the tapped lines. Eventually, though, in 1956, the Soviets revealed that they did know about the tunnel, pretending they'd accidentally stumbled on it. And finally, we have the arrest of Robert Hansen. Not the butcher baker Robert Hansen, Robert Hansen the spy. I don't know how you'd confuse the two. Hansen was a former FBI agent who became one of the most infamous double agents in the history of espionage. He spied for the Soviet Union and later Russia from 1979 to 2001, giving them sensitive material for over two decades. Top secret stuff related to US counterintelligence and national security. This whole story really does sound like it's from a spy movie. It's hard to believe stuff like this actually happens, but it actually happened. He would use dead drops, secret locations where he would leave information for his Russian handlers to pick up. It went on for years, again from 1979 to 2001. Somehow he managed to avoid suspicion for all of that time. The FBI had been investigating leaks of classified information and began to suspect Hansen was involved. It was in 2001 that he was finally exposed. When the FBI finally arrested Hansen, they found that he had compromised a number of intelligence operations and even exposed the identities of US agents working against the Soviet Union and Russia. In 2002, he was convicted of espionage and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. What did you guys think of all these secretive missions? What's your favorite uh, declassified secret mission that you learned about in school? Have you been on a secret mission? I'm a spy. Same here. Oh, shit. oh that's so awkward that we're both there. <laughs> Someone has to leave. Don't forget to tune in to my new channel. It's linked below. I'll see you guys there. Catch you next one. Bye. <laughs> well, I f***ed it up already. Uh, so you can tell I didn't script this because I would never reference Monty Python. <laughs> that is shit. <laughs> <laughs> From... <laughs> I know. You'd think. I, I like that. <laughs> Jedburgh? Jedburgh? Je Jed Jedburgh. Jedburgh. In the pa hmm. ha ha. Okay. Pa pa de Calais. Cal Calais. I know. I know Calais. Pa de pa de Calais. Fucking hell! You set me up to fail with this one. <laughs>